Hi, I'm David. I own and operate Country Whatnot Gardens here in northern Indiana, right outside of Rochester, Indiana, which is an hour south of the Michigan state line. And we grow 25 different species and varieties of bamboo here. Right behind me is Rondinaria gigantea and the varieties Macon. It's an ecotype. It's really cold hardy. It's the cold hardiest bamboo that we grow. And the fact that it's native to North America is that much better. Uh, it does really well here. It's only top killed once since we got it in 1998. That one time that it top killed was a few years ago when we had negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit coupled with 40 mile an hour wind. And it had taken negative 20 before, but not with 40 mile an hour wind. The 40 mile an hour wind coupled with the negative 20 degrees temperature uh, just desiccated it. But it came back the following spring, and as you can see, it's doing fine. It's about 12 foot tall. It has a capability of reaching up to 20 feet, but it hasn't for us here. Um, it's great for habitat reconstruction uh, since it was native here and was wiped out um, by cattle. <laughs> when, when this country was first settled, the cattle grew really fat on it, is, is the word they say. I've not tried it with cows, but if you want, you're welcome to. Uh, it would certainly be a uh, good experiment for somebody to try. But um, this is a really nice species. It's um, dense, you can't see through it. It's, um, it, if it does wind burn, a lot of times the same combs will leaf out again in the spring, whereas with your exotic Phyllostachy species, a lot of times if they wind burn, it just completely kills the comb to the ground and then they have to reshoot in the spring. But a Rundinaria gigantea macon typically doesn't top kill. And if it does, it comes back anyway. And a lot of people ask me for bamboo trees. <laughs> um, bamboo is actually not a tree. It's a grass in the family Poaceae. Uh, same as corn, wheat, rice, all the cereal grains that we're familiar with. And to call it a tree is really setting up unreal expectations because I think when a lot of people think of bamboo, they think of it as something like this. This is a single comb. And it, they say, yeah, but it grows really upright and narrow. I could fit it into a narrow space. Uh, an individual comb? Yes, but that's not how bamboo grows. That's not one bamboo plant. This behind me, this grove that's 50, 60 feet across. I can't even get it all in the picture. Maybe there. <laughs> there, that's our Macon grove. That is one bamboo plant. Each comb in the grove is interconnected by a root that's like an underground stem called a rhizome. And they're real shallow within the top six inches of soil. The feeder roots do go deeper, but the rhizomes that connect comb to comb to comb throughout the grove um, is, is the part that, that travels. Now, Arundinaria gigantea doesn't run as much as, say, like the exotic Phyllostachy species do, uh, but it does still spread. And the general rule of thumb for most running bamboo is that they can support uh, root growth underneath the lawn as far out from the edge of the grove as the tallest comb is high. So let's say we have a 12 foot high grove here. The tallest comb is 12 feet, we'll say. So it can sustain root growth under the ground here, 12 feet out, right? before it needs green growth on it to photosynthesize and, and further sustain that root system. If you allow green growth to come out here and come up and to feed these, to feed these roots that are under here, it will, it will then grow on out further. So if you have a 60 foot diameter grove with 12 feet of root on either side of it under the, under the ground, your, your footprint of 60 feet then becomes a, a, full area of 84 feet because you've got an additional 12 feet of root zone on either side. So this 60 foot grove is taking up 84 feet of space. Isn't that unreal? Now you can get it to grow in a smaller space by putting in an HDPE in ground barrier, but um, I would still say a minimum of about 300 square feet on that. A lot of people think they can cram it into a little bitty space, but see bamboo grows according to its footprint. The more footprint you can give it, the, the, that's the area that the, that the grove itself occupies, right? Which is about 50, 60 feet in diameter in this case. Um, the larger the bamboo grows tall. So if you put a large bamboo in a small area, two things are gonna happen. It's going to um, become 
pop down in its barrier, which could burst the barrier, and two, it's going to be stunted. And you don't want either one of those <laughs> to happen. So anyway, this was a nice introductory introduction to uh, bamboo, hopefully. And let's not think of it as a tree. It's not a tree. Uh, this is this is a comb. This individual part right here. This this is a comb. C U L M comb. Um, again, calling it a tree sets up very unrealistic expectations for bamboo because you think it's going to grow tall, narrow, upright. When that's not the case, it's going to grow as a gigantic piece of sod. And back to what I was saying about the rhizomes requiring photosynthesis to spread out further beyond that distance from the edge of the grove, however tall the tallest comb is high, uh, goes back to controlling bamboo as well. If you have a patch of bamboo that you don't want anymore or whatever, all you have to do is cut off its photosynthesis. That's, that's all you have to do. You don't have to spray it. You don't have to dig it out. Just cut it down and cover the area with something that the new shoots can't come up through. Whether that's a weed barrier, uh, sheets of plywood, um, whatever, and keep it covered for a couple years until that root system is exhausted. That's all you have to do. You don't need toxic sprays. You don't need a lot of work in digging it out. Just cut it down and cover the and cover the ground to prevent new shoots from coming up and you're cutting off its photosynthesis. It cannot survive without photosynthesis. It's 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 a large area and you got to cut it all down. Yeah, that's a lot of work. But if it's a small area and you don't want any more, you don't have to you don't have to use sprays. In fact, there's no herbicide rated for bamboo. Not that I'm aware of, unless they've come out with something new. But um, anyway, I've never understood why somebody wouldn't want bamboo. <laughs> Control it. Be responsible. If you're dealing with a tight area in, in a small backyard or something, put in a barrier. Be responsible. But anyway, I think that's going to do it for our first video. And uh, I hope you liked it. And I hope I didn't ramble too much. But anyway, if you liked it, subscribe for more. And like and share. Thank you. Have a great day.